Hey guys, welcome back. This is going to be tutorial number five of the Ruby scripting tutorials for RPG Maker. Um, today we're actually going to be modifying the battle system in order to um, create a still method. Um, this was a request made by Tani9998 um, and uh, here I've got the uh, request up. It's not everything for it, but obviously you can't see the whole thing, but uh, the basic idea is that uh, he wants the there to be a stilling level and from that stilling level that you can increase your chance of uh, stilling uh, from particular enemies and uh, so we need to be able to one identify how we're going to um, assign what item can be earned or stolen from enemies uh, number two is that uh, the rate of which you can still them um, and then three we also need to uh, go through the process and actually um, process that still so that uh, it doesn't go through the standard skill processing so that it doesn't uh, do like a, a zero damage you know line or whatever down at the bottom so uh, that's kind of what we're going to cover tonight um, so let's go ahead and get started what we're going to first do is go ahead and try to um, we're going to look at how we're going to actually assign each uh, monster a item to still and its rate so um, first off let's actually just take a quick look at the database here and just decide is there something else we can use um, so here we've got the note um, well actually we could just use the drop item and necessarily we could just say that you are going to still not necessarily item one but item two and then you could just set the probability down to zero or one out of one million and oh, I guess it's out of 200 so that's an option we could use that um, or we could um, just create our own um, so we're actually going to go through, I think we're going to create our own, um, but before we do, let's actually go look up this and see how easy it would be to do that. So I'm going to open up the help. You just do that, tap F1. Let me go ahead and shrink it down and fit it into the window here. So, all right. That should do it. Okay, so we know that it is a property of the enemy. So if we go look at RPG enemy in the help file, here we've got the data and we've got drop underscore item 2 and it will return a enemy drop item which in turn contains the item ID um, and so on uh, data out of it so it will give us a kind so we can have that information um, as well as um, the ID of each one of those I'm assuming that means that because each one can be set you actually could technically assign more than one but in here it's a radio button so it 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 will use the the setting in there in that help file in order to um, to determine what should actually be picked up so it was RPG drop item so um, so that's one option we've got available to us the second is to just create our own um, due to the ease of using this one here it'd probably be good um, so I'm going to actually show you both methods just because, you know, I'm nice and I like to show you both methods. So um, uh, here I've actually created a couple of other scripts um, and I'll kind of jump through and we'll just show you how I created those, what they do. Um, and uh, that will just be a quick overview so that you can kind of understand why I did the code I did uh, and we'll just try to go back and review over it but let's go ahead and get into this one first uh, and then we'll do the review of that stuff when we're finished um, so this might be a two-part I'm not sure at this point so anyways um, what we're gonna do is uh, first off we're gonna go ahead and name ourselves our new section here we're gonna go ahead and call this still script and rather than hitting enter I'm gonna go back in and let's see so we need to have a method to look up this information now when we actually are going to be pulling it from the enemy we don't need any additional information because we've already got a probability chance 
we've already got a couple of things. Unfortunately, it doesn't have a rate in which, um, say, our our still still level is going to decrease the, or I'm sorry, increase the probability that you're going to get it. Um, so there's a couple of things we need to do. Number one, we need to store the still level for the character and allow them to be able to gain a level from that. Now, um, in this uh, request, he doesn't actually mention how he's going to gain a skill level, so I'm going to assume he's going to increment it manually um, at certain points throughout the game or something along those lines. So um, we are going to go ahead and create a method for him to do that. So um, this being a skill, it's only assigned to a particular actor, so I will assume, again, assuming, that he is going to assign that skill into that actor's skill list. So we will just catch that skill and return it back out uh, when, we, when we go to try to steal something. So um, we are going to be modifying game actor to store the additional information. So I'm just going to copy the uh, text here so that we don't uh, cause any problems there. And then we are going to modify the initialize method. So we need to store the additional information. So the initialize right now already runs a process for setup on the actor ID, which actually is not a bad place to put it. So we'll actually modify the setup routine. And it requires actor ID. So there are two ways we can do this when we actually do that. So we say alias, since we don't want to play with anything else, we don't want to break anything. We put in the name of the new variation of setup. So we're going to call this game act setup still. This is the new name for the old method, and the old method name being setup. Okay, and now we go ahead and we redefine setup. Now, this redefined setup is going to call the old version of setup first, and here we are going to have actor ID. And here we also have to pass the old one because it required it, actor ID. Now there are other ways to do that. We can actually do this. It's called uh, that way there. It catches all of the um, past things and it will just pass them on through. So if you find that uh, you either you don't care about what's being passed to it, then you can do this because then you're guaranteed so that if anyone else modifies it that this will catch and pass any and all arguments so if they modify it to have an additional argument that's required or not necessarily required but optional then we'll always pass that on so um, if you're not if you're not concerned with the data that's being passed then I usually like to do this method uh, but even from this method, you can just say, give me the first item out of that, and you could say that is equal to actor ID. So a um, couple of options there, but we're just going to leave it open here. So we're going to put still level. Now this still level is um, going to uh, give us a... Um, we're going to set the value to 1. So basically what this is saying is, is this is going to set everyone's still, still level to 1 because we don't know which character it's going to be. Now the other thing is, is that we actually need to make this an accessor because they need to be able to change that. So I'll let them just go and change that through a call script uh, directly to the actor and then they can, they can do that. So now we've got our still level. Um, the next part we need to do is not part of the game actor. Um, again, we need to construct that list of things that can be stolen. So we're going to create a module and we're going to call this still, still ling or something. I don't know, whatever, still. Okay, now um, from this we need to be able to identify the enemy and what from which enemy which items can be earned. So we're going to go ahead and call this one um, can still from and you know what rather than doing a constant I'm going to do it as a method. So we're going to do self dot can still from. 
Now, what that does, this self dot, is it means that it makes this method accessible from outside of the method uh, of the module. Without the self dot, if I tried to come down here and I type in still dot can still from, it's going to die. Now the the only reason it works from the outside is because it's got the self dot. So if that wasn't there, that this command down here wouldn't work, but with the self dot, it will work. So that's that's why we do that. So um, let's see. So can still from, and then we'll provide an enemy ID, and then this will case off of the enemy ID, and then when it is enemy ID number one then we will return some data from which it can derive what can be stolen and uh, so on. So you could create, uh, I'm going to actually do this as a double array, so you have a, a, a array within an array, and the reason why is because we can then say that you can steal more than one thing, so you can actually run from the last item being the rarest and then work your way back uh, from items that you could possibly steal from them. Um, so, what we're going to do is we're going to set the value here for uh, when one being the enemy one. Just double check our time here, make sure we're still good. So, when one being the enemy, we're going to say we can steal item number one, just because that's simple, and we're going to give ourselves a 100% success rate. Okay? And then we're going to also give ourselves item number two at a, uh, let's go at 10% rate. Okay, and then we close the uh, bracket off of that last one, and there we've got our items that we can earn and the rates. So otherwise, we return nil. Okay, and so with that, we can now go back to our battle and figure out how we're going to actually get that. So let's go into the battle and find out how to interrupt that process. So we know that it's after we choose our enemy. So let's look up the, um, well, I guess that's not the method. It's, you know what, let's just look at update. Def space update. It's not basic, it's regular just update. So here is our input place. So here is where we go through the input process. And here is where we actually select our targets, but it's not the selection, it's after the selection that the, the action is performed in, this, in the base battle system. So it's probably going to be under process action. So let's look up process action. Now under process action, it goes through and sets the active battler, determines whether or not the turn has ended, clears the message, flashes the battler, sets that, and here we've got execute action. So execute action just happens to be right here. And down here, here's all your different types of actions. And right here, we've got execute skill action. So again, I'm assuming that they're going to automatically assign their own skill ID here we are going to jump to that function or that method. So inside of here we've got execute skill action. Here we can see that we're going to fetch the skill and then we're going to push the message to the uh, the window. So this is probably, it, it sounds to me like we're going to do an alias but then we're going to catch off of it to when we actually read the skill out of the battler and um, because we're not going to have time to catch it otherwise. So, um, just kind of looking over this here, we, it just continues adding text here. We then make our target list. We then display our animation, remove the MP. We assign the common event, and then we set, and we actually perform the skill effects on the enemies. And then, obviously, after that, then we actually go ahead and display the action effects. So that's where it says, um, you know, skill so and so or so-and-so did X amount of damage, or you've earned this much, uh, or you've absorbed this much, etc. 
So, um, well, we are almost to 15 minutes, so I'm going to actually stop. We're going to restart this in about 30 seconds, and we'll continue on. But we're going to go ahead, and we're going to create an alias of this method. And uh, using that, we're going to make a condition on whether or not it should execute the old code or the new code. So that's how we're going to do this one. So uh, see you in a minute.